Hello everyone, welcome back. So in the previous video, we implemented Firebase authentication and in this video, we're gonna work on our chat room. So now we're gonna go into chat room section and we are gonna design our header section. We are doing this because this current header has a fixed height. That's why we need to add a custom header. So let's add a class name to our container and give it a full space and a background of white okay now we need to make our fonts in the status bar dark so let's use the component status bar and give this a style of dark now we can see our fonts okay now after this we are gonna add our chat room header component so we haven't created this yet so let's go into our components and create a new file chat room header let's create a functional component and save it now let's import it here we will also pass the user to this component that we got from our chat list component so that we can show the user profile and the name on top of the header and we will also pass the router so that we will have a back button on this header and we can use the router to go back to previous component so let's use use router and pass the router here okay now similar to how we can change the screen options inside a layout component we can also do that inside the component itself so all we need to do is import the stack dot screen component and here i can provide options for this component so let's say if i change the title to empty string and save it you will see our title is gone and we can change it to however we want like let's say chat room and if i save it you will see chat room and if i add a username here we will see the username but i want to keep it as empty because i want to show the username on the left side so now i'm going to add another property header shadow visible to false this will remove the shadow at the bottom of our header so let's save it and the shadow is gone now i want to add the content on the left side of the header so if i do that it's going to remove the back button as well and the way we can do it is add a header left property this will be a function that will return a template so let's give this container a class name of flex row because we will have the back button and the username and the profile so let's have a gap of four now let's add a touchable opacity for our back button and uh, for the icon let's go to expo vector icons and find an icon let's search for chevron okay we can use this icon chevron left from ntypo so let's import ntypo icons and name will be chevron left and the size will be um, we need to import our responsive library so let's copy it from sign in and paste it here okay let's give it a size of hp4 and the color will be gray so let me type the hash code for that and save it okay we can see our back icon but it's not working yet so let's add an on press method and we need to get the user and the router properties that we passed from the parent component and using the router we need to call a back function that will hopefully take us back to the previous screen okay so let's save this and test this out okay we're moving back that means it's working now after this button we're going to add another container that will show the user profile and the user name so let's give this a class name of flex row item center and a gap of three and first we will add the image so let's use image component from expo image and for the source we're gonna use the profile url property from user and remember this user is from the chat list user it's not the currently logged in user so let's add a style and give this a height of hp 4.5 aspect ratio as one and let's add a border radius of 100 to make it rounded now let's save this okay we can see the user profile and if we go back and click on any other user this will show the profile of that user okay it's working now after this image we're gonna add the user name as well so let's add a text component and give this a responsive font size of hp 2.5 and let's also have a class name to change the color to neutral 700 and the fonts to let's say medium and let's use the user name property on the user 
and uh, let's save this now we can see the username as well now our header left is done next we're gonna add the header right and we're gonna add the video call and the voice call icons here so let's add the property header right now this again will be a function that will return a template so let's return a view with a class name of flex row and item center and a gap of 8 and inside this view we're gonna add icons for call so let's search for call icon and we're gonna use the ionicons call icon so let's import the ionicons library and name will be call and the size will be let's say HP 2.8 and let's use the gray color for this icon and let's save this and see okay we can see the call icon now we're gonna copy this one more time and that will be for the video call so let's search for the video so we have a bunch of icons um, let's see if we have ionicons okay here you can see uh, we have the video cam icon from ionicons we can use this one so let's change the name to video cam and we can see both the icons now i want to add a bar at the bottom of this header uh, we could do this with the default header but it wouldn't let us to change the height of the header so that's why we are doing this way now for the bar let's add a view and give this a height of three and let's also add a border bottom and give this a color of neutral 300 and let's save it okay we can see the bar um, let's choose the color neutral 200 okay and now it's not very visible so let's change it back to 300 okay now it's good now after this we're gonna add a view that will contain the message history and our input so let's give it a flex one and justify between a background uh, we will have a very subtle neutral background and overflow visible and let's close this now inside this we're going to have a container that will show the message history first so let's add a view for that and let's give it a class name of flex1 and here we're going to have a component message list uh, we haven't created this component so let's go to components and create this new file message list.js create a functional component let's save it and we need to import it here and we're gonna pass the messages from this component so let's create a state for the messages set messages and initially it will be an empty array now let's pass this messages state to this component and let's save it now we can see our message list component but we'll work on that later now we're gonna add a component here that will show the input so let's create another view and give this a class name of padding top of 2 and let's close it now we also gonna have some space at the bottom of this component and for that we will use the margin bottom so we will use our responsive library to add margin bottom so let's go to sign in and copy the import statement for this library paste it here and let's give this a margin bottom of hp 1.7 and let's save it now inside this view we're gonna add another view that will be a container for our input and the send icon so let's add a view and give it a class name of flex row and justify between item center and a margin horizontal of three let's add another view for our input and this will show here because we use justify between for the message list component and this input component so for the input text let's add a view and give this a class name of flex row justify between um, let's add a background of white and a border and a padding of two inside this component we're gonna add a text input component and for now we'll just add a property placeholder that will say type message and we'll close it and save it okay we can see our text component here now we need to change the border color so let's add a class of border neutral 300 let's save it 
Now let's make it rounded as well. So let's add a class of rounded full. And it's rounded now. Now we're gonna have a padding left from the container to the input. So let's add a padding left of five. Okay, great. Now it's not taking full space. And for that, we need to add a class name property on the input. And let's give it a class name of flex one and margin right of two, because we're gonna add an icon on the right side. Now let's also add a responsive font size of HP2. And let's save it. Okay, it's looking great. Now after this text input, we're gonna add a touchable opacity and that will contain our send icon. Let's give it a class name to change the background color and to make it rounded. Let's choose the color neutral 200. And let's also add a padding of two margin right of let's say one pixel and round it full. Now inside this, we're gonna add the icon. So let's go to our expo vector icons and search for the send icon. Let's see which icon should I use. Okay, here uh, we can use the feather icon. So let's import feather icons and we're gonna use the icon send. So let's name it send and for the size, let's use HP of 2.7. And for the color, we're gonna use the gray color. And let's close it and save it. Okay, we can see our input and the icon and I think we should increase the spacing at the bottom. So let's use margin bottom of 2.7. It looks good now. So next we're gonna work on our keyboard awarding view. So if I open the keyboard, you will see it covers our input and it's not good. Now let's also see if I type a long string, it will fit into the input. So let's type, this is a test just to see if the text fits perfectly inside this box. Okay, it works great. Now let's add our keyboard avoiding view. Um, why did I add it this view? inner view is also the same so let's just remove this and we will add the margin horizontal to inner view let's remove this as well and let's add mx of 3 and let's indent it now let's save it and it shouldn't make any change not sure why i added this now let's add our custom keyboard view as a wrapper around this chat room so let's import our keyboard view and let's copy this closing tag and paste it here and we need to indent this inner code and let's save it now the ui is not looking good and i know why so we're gonna go into custom keyboard view and we're gonna add a flex one to the content container style of the scroll view so let's add content container style and add flex one and save it now the view is looking good but we still have the keyboard issue so if i open it it still covers the input now to fix this we're gonna add another property in keyboard avoiding view and we will use a keyboard vertical offset and this is basically the distance between the top of the screen to the top of the keyboard avoiding view it can be different in certain situations but for now i'll use 90. so now if i open the keyboard now our keyboard pushes the input and it looks great now adding these properties has created another issue so if you remember we already used this on our sign up and the sign in and if i open the keyboard on those screens now you can see uh, we can't really scroll it and the view is not looking good so because we added keyboard vertical offset and the flex one to the container of the scroll view that's why it messed up now we need to make some changes so that these properties only exist when we are in a chat room so uh, what is my password I think this one okay so let's go to our chat room and here if I open the keyboard we need to add those properties so let's use a flag and based on that we will add these properties to our keyboard avoiding view let's use in chat and this will be a boolean so let's create configuration for our keyboard avoiding view as an empty object and let's also create another object for scroll view configuration and we will make a condition here to see if we are in a chat 
then we will add these properties so let's add a property to keyboard wording view configuration as keyboard vertical offset of 90 and for the scroll view configuration we will add our content container style as flex1 now we will use this so let's remove this and spread out all the properties in keyboard wording view configuration and let's remove this as well and spread out all the properties inside scroll view configuration okay let's save this and our design got messed up and that's because we are not sending this in chat property so let's go to our chat room and let's add a property in chat as true and this will fix our ui and hopefully our keyboard will be working as well okay let's also see if the keyboard issue is fixed on the sign up screen so if i click on any input and open the keyboard we are still able to scroll through inputs and our keyboard does not cover any input and that's because we never added in chat property on the custom keyboard view for the sign in and the sign up and it's working great so there can be other solutions to fix this keyboard issue but i'm using this way because it's very simple and it fixes the keyboard issue on both the android and the ios devices so this is it for this video and in the next video we're gonna make the ui for our message history and we will also start sending and receiving messages from firebase so see you in the next video